Christmas tonight. There's a wild tiger on the prowl, a man-eater. But you don't have to worry. Me and Captain Martin will protect you. We're gonna find that tiger before he eats any more natives. Tiger that won't give us any more trouble. Get up, Mike. You're not the tiger. Come on, girl. You can get up, too. About. Hi, bud. What are you kids doing? We're playing safari, like we saw in the movie. We're in darkest Africa, and I just shot a man-eating tiger. <coughs> What's in there? <coughs> provisions. What kind of provisions? Oh, well, you know the stuff you take on a safari, like dried buffalo steaks and... To keep from starving. Let's see. Trade for it. What have you got? A slingshot. Watch. That's pretty good. Well, how about it? You want a trade? It's a pretty big candy bar, Boomer. Yeah. And besides, what would we need with a slingshot? You know, they never did catch that guy that robbed the bank in Capital City. What if you run into him? You'll need this for protection. Last is all the protection we need. Aren't you, girl? We got Mike, too. Some protection he'd be. Don't say I didn't warn you. Besides, I just remember this is a high-powered elephant gun. I never heard of a real safari going anywhere without an elephant gun. Think we need an elephant gun, Boomer? Well, they are pretty important, especially if you meet up with any wild elephants. I'm not very hungry anyway. Are you? No. Should we trade? Sure. if you keep closing your eyes. Here, try again. Okay. Mr. Brody's window. Yeah. Boy, I'll bet he'll be mad. But that isn't Mr. Brody. I heard my mom say Mr. Brody had a new hired hand. That must be him. All right, boys, come on over here. Come on up. Well, looks like you boys can't hit what you're aiming at. I'm sorry. I wasn't aiming at the window on this. Well, there's no great harm done. I can probably fix it before old man Brody comes back. He'll never know the difference. Gee, mister, would you really do that? Sure, if I can find a piece of glass that'll fit it. Gee, it's a mighty fine dog you got there. The big one's mine. Her name's Lassie. Well, how do you do, Lassie? Oh. <laughs> 
The other one's Mike. He's my dog. Hey, Mike. I'm Case Ferguson. Old man Brody put me on a few weeks ago. I'm Jimmy Martin. And this is my best friend, Boomer Bates. Mighty happy to know both of you. Shouldn't we tell Mr. Brody that we broke his window? Nah, he just gets sore. You boys run on home. Forget about it. Yeah, thanks, Case. Come on, Jimmy. Timmy, let's get out of here before Mr. Brody gets home. I think we should have waited and told him. Why? Because I think it's right. I'll tell Dad about it. What do you want to do that for? Because I think it's the right thing to do. Don't you, girl? <coughs> and then he said to go home and forget it. His name's Case. He's Mr. Brody's new hired hand. He said he'd fix it, so I don't see why we have to worry about it anymore. Well, that's not the point, Boomer. It was Mr. Brody's property that was damaged. It was nice of uh, Case to offer, but there's no reason why he or Mr. Brody should have to buy a new pane of glass. And another thing, boys, a slingshot like this is not a toy. It's an honest-to-goodness weapon. It's dangerous. Oh, don't look so glum. I'm mighty proud you came and told me about it, Timmy. Thanks, Dad. We have to go and tell Mr. Brody we did it. Come on, Boomer. Well, all right. Come on, Mike. You know, I used to be pretty good with one of these things. I guess every boy thinks that they're fun to use, but they're dangerous. I certainly don't want my son to use one. He won't, dear. I thought I could fix it before you got back, Mr. Brody, but with one thing and another, I didn't get around to it. And this is the rock that did it, huh? I guess so. It looks something like that one. Well, when I was a lad, it was the doer that paid for the deed. Yes, sir. But what does that mean? That means I think you should pay for your mischief. But it wasn't supposed to be mischief. Honest, Mr. Brody. Well, whether it was or it wasn't, I think you should be made to work it out. I'll be leaving for town in a couple of minutes, Case. We'll go over that supply list when I get back. Yes. Come inside, fellas. Oh, come over here. I want you to notice these rocks. You'll notice they're different colors, different structures, different... Hmm? Different what, sir? Well, well now look at this one. This looks like it's made up of a lot of little pebbles, all pasted together. And this one, that looks real smooth, like a piece of paper. Now, you fill the sacks with rocks like these, and I'll consider your debt is paid. I'll go along with you. There's a sack for you and a sack for you. There you are. Go along. It's almost full. <laughs> We've got to do better than this, boy. Go find us a rock. I wonder what Mr. Brody wants with a bunch of old rocks, anyway. Search me. And what do you want to lift that rock for? Maybe he liked the way they taste. What's it taste like, Timmy? Like a rock. Why don't you pick on a rock your own size? You told him to find a rock, and he did. <laughs> That's enough of that, boy. We've got work to do. I sure wish we hadn't traded our candy bar to Freddy. Me too. 
It would have tasted better than any old rock, I bet. Yeah, and we wouldn't have broken that window, and we wouldn't have been out here looking for stupid stones. Well, let's hurry up and get done. Okay. Come on, Mike. We can't go home yet. You can't fill a sack with one rock. I don't care how big it is. Come on, Lassie. What'd you find, girl? Boomer! Hey, Boomer, come here, quick! Look what Lassie found. What are they? An old hat and a red bandana. I thought she was supposed to be digging for rocks. Yeah. Come on, girl. Look, look at this. Capital City National Bank. Timmy, this is a money bag. Like they use in banks to put money in? And then they put it in an armored car and drive it away someplace. But where did Mr. Brody get them? Timmy, Mr. Brody's a bank robber. How do you know? I remember my dad reading in the paper that the robber who held up the bank wore a red bandana and an old hat. Gosh. You know what this is? This is evidence. We better take it to Sheriff Miller. Let's go tell Case, and he can call the sheriff. Golly, Boomer. We'll be really heroes. And when we saw that, we knew right away that Mr. Brody was the bank robber, didn't we, Timmy? Sure did. Well, it uh, certainly looked like you got the evidence here, all right? See, I told you. We better call off Sheriff Miller. So I can get out here right away. No. Come to think of it, we'd better drive into town with the evidence and give it to Sheriff Miller in person. Well, I guess so. But I'll have to call Mom so she'll know where I am. Better than that, Timmy, we'll stop by your place on the way. Now, we better hurry. Old man Brody may come back. Now, I'll take care of these. And you boys jump on the truck. Now, I'll be within a minute. Okay. Elephant Hunter's back already? Well, where's Timmy and Boomer, girl? Paul, I'm a little uneasy about the boys. I'll call Mr. Brody and find out what's going on. Jenny? This is Paul Martin. Would you ring the Brody farm, please? Uh, 
Well, ring a few more times, Jenny, would you please? No answer? No, he's probably out at the barn or someplace. Uh, no, that's all right, Jenny. Thanks anyway. Goodbye. We're going to drive over to the Brodies. Case? Sure it is. I'm taking a new shortcut. Oh. I don't see them, Paul. I'll look around. Oh, here comes somebody. Brody, we came over because we were a little concerned about Timmy and Boomer. Well, I hope you folks won't be upset, but I gave them a job to do to repay me for breaking my window. Oh, what sort of a job? Well, you see, Mrs. Martin, I'm a rock hound, and I, uh, well, <laughs> you know, I, I collect rocks and all that sort of thing. Say, that's a hobby I'd like to try. You know, honey, collecting rocks and then making bookends and rings and things like that. Oh, that sounds interesting. Um, what kind of a job did you give them, Mr. Brody? Well, I told them that they filled a couple of sacks with rocks, certain kinds of rocks. I'd uh, call it square for the debt. Well, that sounds fair enough. Sacks? Uh, well, you know, little money sacks. I got a real bargain on those sacks, too, from a bank over in Capital City. They're a little worn, but uh, they come in mighty handy for collecting rock specimens. Uh, come on to the shed and I'll show you. All right, girl. Here's the cutter and polisher I put together, Mr. Martin. Well, that doesn't look too complicated. No, and uh, it's not expensive either. Here, I'll, I'll show you a little trick. Now, this is a sample of rainbow obsidian. You see where I wet it there? It'll give you a fair idea what it looks like when it's all polished up. Hey, how about that? You see that, Ruth? Yes, I'm sure it's very pretty. Huh? I'll uh, try to find some work that's all finished so you can see that... Now, oh, that's funny. What is it, Mr. Brody? Well, these sacks I gave to the boys. They're almost full. Well, then Timmy and Boomer came back. <laughs> How in thunder did that happen? Capital City National Bank. What does it mean, Paul? I don't know. I think I'd better notify the sheriff. Excuse me. What's wrong? Well, Sheriff Miller said finding the money hidden here means there's a good chance it was Case who held up the bank. The boys are probably with him. Oh, Paul. Well, they can't have gone far. Well, the only road they could have taken was the old river road, at least till they get to the main highway. The sheriff will try to head them off there. Looks like Lassie had more sense than we did. Well, go in my car. It's headed in the right direction.
blasted dog get here? Did you hear that? Sounded like a shot. Oh, if I ever lay my hands on that man. to sheriff. Well, it was certainly nice of Mr. Brody to give you these bookends, Timmy. I guess Mr. Brody's all right after all, but he isn't very smart. Why, Timmy? You know what he thinks? He thinks Lassie's a rock hound, and everybody knows she's a collie. <laughs> I'm sorry, Timmy. We shouldn't have laughed. What Mr. Brody means, dear, is that Lassie's good at collecting rocks. And anybody who has that as their hobby is called a rock hound. Oh. In that case, girl, I guess you're a rock hound. But most of all, you're the smartest dog in the world. Because you knew Case was the bank robber. 